Welcome back to Five on the Floor. I am your host, Greg Solvander. Tonight's episode, we are calling this post split. So these are these post game pods where we're going to react quickly to what just took place with me on tonight's floor plan is the coach Sean Rochester. We are going to dissect a little bit of what took place. Miami lost 98 90 to the Toronto Raptors. This was a, um, a two game home stand, a four game home stand, but two of them in a row were against Toronto. They won the first one against Toronto. It's extremely difficult to win both. And they did not win the game tonight. Uh, there were definitely some things that I thought were positive. There were also some things that were extremely negative. We're going to dissect all of those different things. But before we do I want to tell you about two great sponsors of the five reasons sports network. And that's one that you'll be hearing a lot on our post game shows. And that's a aggressive insurance. They are, an insurance broker agency that it's been servicing South Florida for over 15 years. They offer auto insurance, homeowners insurance, condo insurance, life insurance, all kinds of different retirement programs. They give free notary service to all their clients. They represent uh, leading in care carriers in South Florida. If you have a bad driving record, no problem. No driver is refused. They have free phone quotes, so they're super accessible. The website is insurance by Lynette. That's insurance by L I N N E T T E dot com. Lynette is a friend of the program. You can find her on Instagram. Check out A Aggressive Insurance on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, the other sponsor that we want to tell you uh, about, you guys know I talk about them quite a bit, and that's Water Cleanup of Florida. Do you have a water leak and can't find where it's coming from? De dealing with water or mold damage in your home or business with these hurricanes that have came and crept up lately, you might. Call Water Cleanup of Florida, 954-579-0356 for immediate assistance. With over 60 years of combined experience, Michael, Robert, and their team are prepared to handle any size disaster, any type of leak. They can detect it 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They will work to get the leak located and repaired. They're fully licensed, insured. They're certified to, prov to provide the one-stop shopping that every homeowner and business owner requires. Service areas include, this is important, Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach County. Call Michael anytime in his personal cell, 954-5790-356. That's 954-5790-356. Or visit their website, wcufl.com. If you got the schmutz, they got the guts. Yeah. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck the said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Okay, so I really wanted this victory, Sean, and I felt like they had it. I felt like there were parts uh, towards the uh, – in the third quarter, they made a couple runs where it looked like, okay, they're going to take over this game. And then – the bottom fell out of, of what we saw tonight. Another game where Miami can't shoot threes. Another game where Miami is out rebounded. These are common threads now. They are one and three. They're about to embark on a West Coast trip. Um, what jumped out at you most from the game tonight against Toronto? I guess let's start with the bad stuff and then we'll talk about maybe some hopeful things we can look ahead to. Uh, what, what really jumped out at you that you didn't love tonight in this 98, 90 loss? Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know which way you wanted to go with that first, because there are some things that stood out good. There's some things that stood out bad, obviously late, you know, the, the turnovers, the stagnant offense, it, it just seemed like we could not get ourselves into any sort of rhythm after really re regaining that rhythm in the third quarter, both offensively and defensively. Um, it, it just seemed like the ball did not move. And it was very simple for the Toronto Raptors, who are a good defensive team, a long team. If you're not going to move the ball side to side, if you're not going to make cuts and move players around the floor, it's going to be really hard to score on those teams. And you, know, you see the result is the, the Heat finish with around a 95 offensive rating, a 79 offensive rating in the half court. That's not going to beat most JV teams in South Florida. So, you know, it's like you, you just got to be better than that in terms of execution, especially in a close game. 
Yeah. Um, Alex is feeding this to the off the floor subscriber feed. So if you're not on there yet, I would definitely hop in because he always comes with some um, super dope stats that provide context into what we just saw. They finished the game with an offensive rating of 94.7. The Raptors were 102.1. But in transition, Raptors 188.9 to 94.4 for Miami. So they're not getting out in transition. Uh, Turnover battle was even, but the Heat were out rebounded. Um, so there's there's those types of things. I feel like essentially what, what I'm seeing, if we're not going to put a bunch of numbers behind it, is Bam Adebayo is being um, asked to do too much on, on defense at this current moment. Also to be a big man, to do some of the rebounding stuff, although obviously Tyler Hero had a career night from that uh, in that regard. I, I don't know that you can ask them all to always do that. And so I think that this is a game in particular where a player like PJ Tucker is missed. Uh, I hate to bring that up. I know it's probably adding insult to injury after this loss, but I do think that this is showing a little bit about what they're missing in terms of a player with at least the length and the ability to play some of, uh, of the big man stuff or a player like PJ that can do those different things. Um, as we look at the rotation, um, let's stop and talk about Dwayne Dedman and talk me off the ledge, Sean. I need a coach's perspective, a measured coach like yourself to tell me why Dwayne Dedman can continue to play. Cause the way I feel every time he comes in the game, the other team goes on a run. He does not look good. He's taking weird hook shots. He is not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I know your hurt. So maybe your will get those minutes eventually, but at this point I'm willing to see anybody else Talk me off the ledge or tell me why I am um, right and that Dwayne Dedman needs to probably not play in the next game. I'm going to push you off the ledge and talk to you as you're falling down into the abyss because I have nothing I can say about Dwayne Dedman right now. You know, he is a role player. He is nothing more than that. That's the role player we had last year when things were good. It is the role player we signed to that contract that was most likely you know signed to be traded. But when you look at his impact, 10 minutes – didn't score, only shot that crazy little sky hook like he was Kareem. One rebound in 10 minutes is not what you can get out of him. One foul. I don't think he had a moving screen. Maybe that's the only positive that we have from him tonight. I mean, <laughs> there's just nothing. And, and, and um, that's rough. <laughs> unfortunately for Spo, like, you know, I know a lot of people were hoping in the second half that he took away his minutes and he, and he def- definitely reduced them, but you can't play Bam the entire game. And then when you look up and down the bench, who are you going to play? Highsmith wasn't very good tonight. Uh, and, you know, obviously he has his own limitations. Unless you're going to play Haslam. I know Jamal Kane, they wanted to, you know him to go out there, but he's still not a big guy. And then Drew Smith was the only other person. They just didn't have any options. So, uh, you know, does that mean that we need to adjust our roster via signing trades, you know, things like that? I think that's maybe the route you have to go eventually. But, you know, it's still four games, but nothing, nothing promising out of Deadman so far, unfortunately. That's true. He's looking more and more like a player that come December or January or whatever the month is. I keep, it used to be December 15th and I keep getting corrected. I think it's January 15th now that a guy like Dwayne Dedman can get moved. Um, I think that his contract along with a couple others can get a high quality veteran. So I think that that will not be uh, all for not, uh, that and I cl- and I was clumsy in how I delivered that. So let's just talk about the beginning of this season. We're gonna get into the, some of the good stuff we saw because you got me effed up. If you think that I'm about to do this show and we're gonna finish on a sad note because that's not how I roll. But they have lost three or four at home. Chicago and Boston the losses. They squeaked out one against Toronto that felt like it should have been better than a three point loss. And then they've lost again to Toronto. And here we go, Sean. Now they go on the road, uh, a back-to-back at Portland, at Golden State. Then they have a night off. And then they're at Sacramento. And then this is the messed up part about this, is that then they come home, right? And it's like, yay, they come home. But they play Golden State, who they will have just played um, a couple nights before. And then they play Sacramento. So I, I feel like Sacramento is one of those teams that can come in and be dangerous. What the hell do they need to do in this road trip? Because to me, if you're one in three on this trip and you go and you lose, um, let's just say they lose 
both of the games to Golden State. They split with Sacramento and they lose to Portland. Like essentially you are in a situation where you are starting to get in a weird spot in the East. And so I'm interested to hear how you think they weather the storm on this road trip. Sometimes it, it makes teams come together. We've seen it before the road warriors. You were around for that. And there's been other teams too, that have banded together on the road, figured things out. I think Spoh's going to need to get creative. What is the path to them surviving this quick West coast trip? Yeah. I mean, you make that good point about, you know, the the time on the road that you're together with the team, you're getting away. We've had four games at home to start the season, which is very unique. And, and maybe this is a good time to go on the road. I know that's kind of the, the coach speak or the motivational thing, or, you know, it, it, who knows how true that is, but these guys need something different right now. Something has to shake up, whether it's the roster, whether it's the experiences that they're going on off the court, uh, rotations, style, whatever it is, something has to change. And, you know, hopefully on this West Coast trip, obviously you, you see some tough competition and, and Portland and Sacramento are not to be taken lightly. I mean, they're they're young teams that can get after it. They're athletic. And, uh, you know, we have not looked good for kind of a majority of these four games. So it's uh, it's not a trip where you can take things lightly. You got to try to find wins where you can get them. And uh, hopefully we can draw the positives that we saw in the third quarter and uh, kind of reduce the negatives that we saw later in the fourth quarter positives look at you just like straight up like that's a point guard move right there i don't know if you played point in school we never went through this i don't know i was a one did you play the one no i was i'm I'm six five so i was always trying to be oh like they one. put you down low were you a four yeah in high school i had to play with my back to the basket but once i got to college i played a little bit more like maybe like a lamar Odom, like a point forward i like to play on the perimeter you know so but i you know i got pigeonholed as the uh, high school player the big guy yeah i know how that goes with high school players and shout out to you for trying to compare yourself to lamar odom because um, <laughs> one of my my favorite players too anyway you talk about positives tyler hero is a positive to me i know he's eight of 18 and probably people want to be a little bit more efficient with the two of nine from three but 15 rebounds four assists uh played 40 minutes stayed out of foul trouble uh, scored 22. I like what I see from Tyler over and over again. I think that he is showing that he has matured as an offensive player, as a basketball player. He is physically ready to take a leap when it comes to shouldering the burden offensively night overnight. Jimmy Butler obviously looked great. I think we could have used a little bit more of him late. Um, those were the two major takeaways for me. I'm concerned about Max Strews, but you know what? Duncan Rob Robinson, your favorite player, is waiting in the wings, and maybe if Max needs to take a game off or play less minutes i feel like duncan robinson is primed to uh contribute in that way so those were the main takeaways for me i gotta be honest with you kyle lowry you didn't show up good you weren't good enough tonight you weren't so no. that's just how that is and so now we're back to where we were before you had a couple good games now you had one off you're being paid to not do that so um let's just be real about that um, any final thoughts from you in terms of what you saw that was positive, particularly stuff that you think may trans uh, translate as we head out on the road? Yeah, I haven't looked at the timeline, but I'm sure this is going to be a talking point that that point of uh, the fourth quarter where he was trying to get Jimmy in around the six minute mark, uh, a weird stretch of game where there was no dead balls to make a substitution. I'm curious, what do you think, Greg? Like, would you have used a timeout if you're supposed to stop the play to get him no. in? No. Uh, I, I, you know, I think it's tough. Like I know obviously now when you're looking back at it, sort of Monday morning quarterback, like, yeah, use the timeout because you didn't need it at the end anyways. But like, I just feel like you, you, you assume that you can keep it afloat. They were still only down, I think three when he entered around the four minute mark. So, and the stoppage of play can happen at any moment. So it's exactly. like also there's that element of it that like people can act like they know what they would have done in that moment and make a decision. But when you're standing there, you could think, Oh, the next play, they're going to knock it out of bounds. And that's just what you hope for. So it's like, that that's a tough spot, but you're right. In retrospect, man, getting some Jimmy minutes when he got mm -hmm. to the basket so easily, scored so easily, right upon getting the ball late in the fourth would have been nice. But like, um, what other stuff did you you know jumped out at you uh before we look close up here? Yeah, I mean, Tyler was great. He's gonna get a little uh heat for the finish of the game, but I, I think he was great throughout. We would have got blown out if we didn't have his rebounding and scoring. Um, Jimmy was great, especially just when they were playing zone, finding spots on the baseline, 
Uh, at times, Bam was very good, but you need somebody else. And Duncan was really the only person that contributed. Max couldn't get shots to go down 0 for 8. Highsmith was bad. Devin was bad. Gabe, kind of one of those down games, even though he had four assists. It, it just wasn't enough. And you lose a game by eight points that you probably should have won. Yep. And this is going to be a season where they can't afford to lose a lot of these that they probably should have won. Chicago is another one that they could have likely squeaked out had things gone differently in certain respects. So they can't have too many of these. Um, So we'll see how it goes as they head out on the road. You will hear a lot more of Ethan Skolnick's voice as he takes over and uh, hosts for a lot of these road game shows. But uh, thank you for joining us. We like to do these post splits directly following the game so that you have something to uh, listen to as you're driving home, as you're winding down from watching the game. But uh, definitely uh, look out for Hank over time that will be on the five reason sports youtube channel today and then we'll have you covered with the post game show paces and spaces on twitter and all of our other programming for the rest of the uh road trip as miami goes out west thank you for joining us good night thank you for listening to the five on the floor on the five regional sports network